This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the Indie Mayhem Show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling or just independent people doing things around professional wrestling, uh, as is the day today, uh, what we're doing today. Uh, some people with some history today, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, this conversation. In the meantime, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or IndieWrestling.us. That's where you can find out for WrestlingMayhemShow.com, this and other great, great podcasts. And, of course, uh, this show shows up on IndieWrestling.us, as well as a lot of great content, uh, including a lot of people we talk with on the show. A lot of the wrestlers that we ha- have on the show um, do show up on there and over at the IndieWrestling.network as well. So please support that. Hit us up at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. If you have any questions for any announced guests, please take a, keep a look on the uh, Facebook pages for Indie Wrestling and Wrestling Mayhem Show for our upcoming guests, and you can drop questions there or those lines. Or if uh, you have anybody you think we should be talking with on the show, uh, hit us up there. We do take suggestions. We don't get to watch all of the independent wrestling out there. And if there's somebody that's really uh, uh, on your radar that you think should be on ours too, we do appreciate um, that. And we have gotten a lot of great, great guests off of that, off of that, whether they're wearing a boar's head or uh, <laughs> doing wrestling in Texas, uh, we, we've had a lot of fun conversations thanks to your suggestions out there. So I want to keep it up here in 2019. So the guys today, I originally, met, I think I originally met you guys in Meadville, and we'll get into that too. But uh, the gentleman from Pro Wrestling News and Views, which we were just talking about, your your 18th year of it's hard doing to this, believe. yeah, our 18th anniversary and coming up in March. So we have John Pithers with us. Gosh. How you doing? Good. How are you, Mike? And then we also have on the couch, we do have Pat Gallagher with us. Hey, Mike. Good to see you, buddy. Awesome. And also we have, you're the newbie on this, right? Well, I'm four years in. They didn't even update you. Out of the 18. They haven't even updated you on the Facebook page. (laughs) No, they have not. (laughs) Uh, Randy Bedell is joining us here. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, So I, uh, you know... We'll get into the show and everything, and uh, but I like a little icebreaker here I do with the wrestlers. I want to do it with you guys, too, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I usually ask, uh, what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Whoever wants to go first. Go we'll ahead, just go John. down the line. Okay, yeah, I'll go off. first. My earliest memory, Mike. It's the same question we ask on our show. Yeah, the, pretty much. No, yeah? Yeah. Um, it would be with uh, being around my parents and my grandparents with them watching studio wrestling and my dad used to take his parents down to those shows uh i never made it that was before my time but they were watching on television i got hooked there um i think it it was actually my uncle and cousin that took me down to the arena for my first trip but from then on my dad took me religiously month after month year after year down to the arena and uh I couldn't wait for those shows to come, you know, and then, of course, I was buying all the uh, magazines on the stand, you know. I couldn't wait for them to come out every month. But that was my first introduction into pro wrestling. One thing I'll never forget, my grandfather always told me, Johnny, he said, those guys are all riding home in the same car together. I said, no, no, no way. (laughs) You know, I'd fight him tooth and nail, and uh, he'd keep telling me that all the time. And then I got into business, and it was like, Damn, he was right. Mm -hmm. He was right all Mm -hmm. along. (laughs) Wow. But that's my earliest memories, you know, uh, with my grandparents, my parents, and uh, going to the shows. I often say uh, I I, I believed in pro wrestling longer than I did Santa Claus. So, (laughs) spoiler alert. Me too. Yes. Amen. Uh, (laughs) I agree with you, Mike. What about you? Yeah, uh, similar, Mike. Uh, I got got interested in watching it on Channel 11, WIC in Pittsburgh, of course. Um. Mom, mom and dad had no time for it at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandmother hated it. My grandfather loved it. So I, I kind of got hooked in <laughs> with him, and we watched it pretty much every Saturday night. Uh, as we got old, and it's funny, as much as my grandfather enjoyed this, he never went to an arena show in his life. He just he just didn't go, and I don't know, I don't know why that was. Mm-hmm. But we would go to the shows at the Butler High School, 
and then of course go to the arena shows and all that sort of thing. But oh, I just it was it was so much fun. And, and for a long time, yeah, I believed it. But there was that point in time where you think, nah, nah this, this, you know, it, it's a work. There's, there's something going on here. And know? and the Butler shows were they kind of an extension of what was going on down here in Pittsburgh? Were they, they were. They were. Yeah. They were like maybe going like to the Jaffa Mosque or going to yeah. you know, all the spot shows around. Yeah. You could you could get closer to the guys and usually get an autograph if you wanted to talk to them on the way out to the car, which that kind of blew some of the mystique for me right there. Like, <laughs> like actually being next to the guy and talking to him, interacting with them. Yeah. Uh, some guys giving an autograph, some guys blowing you off. But yeah. uh, it was a great experience, but it's such a good time. And, and the, the love of the business, it's just kept on. You know, when I, once I was driving myself, mm-hmm. we'd go all the time, take my friends down, you know. Uh, I can remember the, the ticket ringside ticket golden ringside for six dollars wow. that was even in the mid to late 70s golden ringside is set on the ticket for six it wasn't months. even that for meadville the last few years no not even close <laughs> but, but yeah like john really really into it really enjoyed it had a, the, the spectacle uh, i enjoyed the referees as much as i enjoyed the wrestlers every bit as much we, we can talk about that too of course but yeah awesome and randy the newbie here uh, <laughs> what's your what's your memory same deal with me i mean i'm the same age as these guys and yeah. studio wrestling was the uh origins for me as well so watching that on saturdays it can go until whenever sometimes it came on at a set time sometimes it came on whenever a sporting event was on yeah. prior to it and there was no uh timetable to it but uh that started with that and mine unlike pat's i was there was a the whole family was involved my brothers my sister my mother my dad we, we all went sort of as a family somewhat, you know, eventually it tapered off to just me and my father and my brother. But after the fact, uh, we just went, like you said, every month, I went away to college late, later years to Clarion, came back home every month to, uh, see the shows at the arena. So it just continued on and on. My dad going back, I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm not from Butler, but, uh, he was a laundryman here in Pittsburgh. So he would deliver the laundry actually to Bucky Palermo, who had a mm. tailor shop at the time. So he became friends with Bucky. He was also friends with back in the day. Izzy Moydell was a referee. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of our in for tickets. So we didn't really even pay for tickets early on. We would get them comped from from those guys. So and, that and, was our introduction. And just to clarify for those non like area people, like like Bucky was a referee as well. Bucky Palermo yeah. was a referee. Izzy Moydell. There was a whole set crew. Andy Kidley Paul, who's been on the show before. Mm-hmm. Patty Grimes. Mm-hmm. All the old school Bucky guys McTiernan. from the '60s and '70s. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So uh, I think from discussions, you guys like you guys have been involved with the wrestling industry kind of here and there before this show, too. Can you talk about a little bit of that background here before we get into what what you guys do with pro wrestling news and views? Me, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Um, I always wanted to be a wrestler, just like all of us wanted. to be. Yeah. You know, these guys were our superheroes and I was never big enough to be a wrestler. So I had a love of photography. And uh, so I ended up becoming a professional photographer, and I got hooked up with Bill After, who is one of my heroes. Mm-hmm. So I shot with Bill at the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Family of Magazines. We call them the After Mags. And I was one of Bill's right-hand guys, so it was like a dream come true for me. And I was shooting all around the States and uh, for Bill, and I was his go-to guy. And uh, whenever the Monday night wars were on you know raw and nitro uh i was uh basically the only american guy around the ring you know they had uh the japanese around the ring and whatnot and you could pick me out like i stuck out like a sore thumb the white guy you know but anyway so uh, we can we can find you on the uh on the wwe network right now oh definitely yeah definitely yeah so i was in the heat of that and it was it was just a dream come true and bill's like uh you know a brother to me now Mm -hmm. and uh Whenever I got married, he even videotaped our wedding, and then I went over to do a couple bar and bat mitzvahs for his kids on over in the Philly. Wait, wait, wait. Bill After videotaped your wedding. Yes, he did. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and what's crazy, you know, photography brought us together. Yeah. And uh, But I was running a videography business on the side for uh-huh. 20 years, shooting weddings every Saturday, eight months out of the year. And coincidentally, Bill was shooting weddings over. I was in the Pittsburgh end of the state. He was on the Philadelphia end of the state, and he was shooting weddings on his end of the state. We neither one of us knew that each other did the videography, and we both used the same equipment. Huh. It was crazy. It was just insane. So then he had me come over for his kids' uh, bar and bat mitzvah, uh, boy and girl, and then uh, as a trade-off, he came over and shot my wedding. Yeah. 
Nice. So, but we were real close and uh, spent a lot of time together. And like I said, I was his go-to guy. And I got along with the wrestlers, and I was backstage at ringside all the time. And he knew if he had something that needed done, somehow, some way, Johnny would get it done. And, and I would, you know, because the guys, we had a liking to each other, you know. And uh, But Bill opened up a lot of doors for me. I mean, Hogan and uh, The Rock. I mean, Ro I remember Rock when he won the belt, larger than life, you know, and he'd come back through the curtain, and he'd, like, brush everybody off. And if I stopped him and told him I needed something, you're Bill's guy. Yeah, I'll do it. And he'd pose for, you know, cover shot or whatever, you know. So um, Bill opened up a lot of doors for me. Yeah, he's a great, great, great guy. And then that evolved into the show that we're talking about, Pro Wrestling News and Views. Uh, we just said that we'll be on uh, thir 18 years in March. 18, right? 18 yep. years in March. I was going to say 13. I lost five years somewhere. Hmm. But um, – it, it was Pat and the original Randy, Randy Fox. It was their idea. I don't know if it was yours, Peach, or Randy's first. I think Randy brought it to me, actually. Did he? Yeah. yeah. So Randy Fox had the idea, brought it to Pat, and they had this cooking in their heads. And I just, I knew of it. They told me of it. I thought it was kind of crazy. But then whenever uh, Armstrong came to Pat about more local origination programming, he had, they they had the idea, yeah. you know. And then they got me on board and. That was 18 years ago, and it just uh, has flourished, you know. So it's it's been a fun ride. It's yeah. awesome. What about you, Pat? Well, business-wise, I, I really had nothing to do with wrestling besides watching it and being a fan. Yeah. Uh, but I always enjoyed, like I said earlier, about catching the guys coming in and out of the building, seeing what mm -hmm. they were really like, maybe talking to them, finding out what you could about them, you know. And, of course, buying the magazines. I had to have the magazines. But <laughs> Most kept, kept, the, kept the close reign on what was going on uh, every, every Saturday night on, on TV. And uh, the uh, the whole pro wrestling news and views things, like John was saying, we just um, we had an idea. We took it to our local cable operator, had a meeting, and they said, "Let's do it." So mm -hmm. quickly, we were like, uh, "Oh, okay. Uh, what do we do?" <laughs> <laughs> it was that quick. It was literally that quick, you know. And it's just continued on. That's awesome. What about you, Randy? Any, it's all, any, any just been as a fan yeah. of the sport and just following and. I probably was, John became just as strong a collector, but I was always a collector early mm. on with the oh. magazines and the figures and, and all the oddball stuff that I would find on eBay over the years from the yeah. 80s and, and prior. So it was more that, and it was through John that I became friends and opportunity arose to come on the show, and I've sort of been doing it ever since. And with his help also, you know, I befriended some of the people, so I, I became mm -hmm. friends over the years with uh, Bruno pretty good, you know, maybe mm -hmm. we'll get into later, but... uh it was a good introduction that John had for me, and he had a lot of respect and a lot of esteem for me with, you know, Bruno that got him on the show a couple more times. And sure. Unfortunately, we didn't get him another time but uh, before yeah. he passed, but, you know, it was a good uh, opening. Awesome. So, so again, you know, you, you, you guys show it was on Armstrong Cable, which is a... I guess regional cable company. I mm -hmm. you say it's in other states. It's I know it's they're other states. they're in a number of states. Uh, yeah. I think ten different states, and they have eleven. I believe eleven cable systems. Okay, so it kind of gets here and there and everywhere. You know, it, it, it crosses over state lines sometimes, depending on how the the system was wired decades yeah. ago. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So we never know where we, we get emails. We're like, well, how did they see the show? Yeah, yeah. It's getting emails from like eight different states. Yeah. You know, so it has to appear in at least eight states yeah but unfortunately know. they don't stream it anywhere so if you don't like i'm from <laughs> pittsburgh and i tell my family for the last four years yeah. i'm on the show and it goes to seven states and <laughs> we don't see you here on comcast so right. you can't get it on youtube although they did release two videos recently yeah, yeah. uh the bruno one and he released a daniel Hooven uh interview that we did mm -hmm. not long ago but other than that you can't really see it anywhere no, yeah, it's your it's family's an Armstrong like, only. What the heck's show. he doing? You know, yeah. once or twice a month, he's taking right. off yeah. saying he's shooting yeah. a TV show. <laughs> yeah, it, it's such a, it, it's such in this internet age, you know, you know, stuff like we're doing now, we're streaming on Facebook and stuff. But uh, this was what 2001, probably, yes. if I have my yeah. math right. Yeah. So like this wasn't a thing. Like podcasting wasn't even a thing. Like, to do like a video content thing, like unless you had a blog, uh, you know, posting photos was an easy thing to do probably right. back then, or ish. Ish. Probably by then they're probably enough tools to do that. Yeah. Um. But th I mean, this is this was a kind of your a best opportunity for reach. It's like you get on TV, you get on cable, right? Yeah. Um. The Indies were doing that. They were on whatever you know, double BGN or whatever it was in like the mid two thousand. I know here locally. Um. So well, Armstrong looked at it as local origination. Absolutely. Something that if you wanted to see these guys, it's on Armstrong. You can't just see it anywhere. That was kind of their thing. And then we promote obviously promote their pay per views. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Armstrong in demand. So. Before the network came along. Right. Well, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back, yeah, yeah, back then, in the day. That yeah. was what the show also we pumped their pay per views. You know? yeah. yeah. That was the week we always aired. Was yeah. the week of the pay per view. Yeah. And we still do. Yeah. yeah. The week mm-hmm. before. Funny story on that regard, before I forget to tell it, is we were on the air, what, maybe three months? Three months. Three shows? Yeah. Three, and then they four. called this big meeting at the corporate headquarters in Armstrong, and we're like, are we that bad? We're I mean, like, well, that's it. We thought we were getting the apps. <laughs> we're like, we thought we were doing okay. Maybe it yeah. is bad, but is it that bad? It wasn't that bad, surely. So we're like going into this round table meeting we go up to the headquarters we're in this big lavish room sitting around this table and we're like yeah. gulping you know <laughs> and the head honcho comes in and we're like why if you're gonna ask us why did you call us into this big corporate oh, meeting? we didn't there? say that of course no we're thinking no, yeah yeah, yeah, we're yeah, thinking, yeah why'd they call us in here yeah, what's they're gonna going put on the hatchet down you know it's like so we're sitting around he comes in and we all do a big gulp and we're like and he's like well and we're like gulp and he's like we love the show and we're like what you love the show (laughs) we're like i thought we were getting axed he's like we love the show we love the show so much we want a second show each month we need it we're like this is great (laughs) yeah this is unbelievable so he's like does anybody have any ideas and i had already thought this through but i thought it wouldn't happen for years down the road and i said yeah i have an idea and everybody's looking at me like where'd you come up with that and i'm like how about um i know a lot of guys in the business i'm friends with a lot of them how about we have a show that end up being called Pro Wrestling News and Views Extra. Uh, we have another show each month that has all the people that are involved with the business, promoters, referees, mm-hmm. managers, managers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, interview show, uh, wrestlers, you know. So, and that was three months in, and we thought we were getting the axe, and here it is 18 years later, and we're still on the air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was a great day. I mean, we were in and out of there, lickety split. We thought, right. you know, we were getting the axe, and here they were giving us another show each month. So and I'm only aware because I, you guys had me down. Uh, we were uh, talking stuff, and I think we were what, promoting one of the Meadville shows or something uh, a few years ago. Right? And your business, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and uh, so I know the interview side of things, what you do. But generally, what was the show uh, when it wasn't involving like an interview or something? Well, oh, oh just hype in the pay per view. Yeah, hype in the pay per view. We talk news. about yeah, yeah, the, news. the monthly news mm-hmm. and any events yeah. that are going on locally, and then talk about the pay per view and preview the matches. And sometimes talk about the results of the previous pay per view and how that affects the next one coming up. Mm-hmm. So, and that show is still the same. That's pretty yeah. much that's what we do exclusively, like the brand that the pay per views for, like WWE, right? Right? right. Yeah, and, correct. And, and any news that came through that month, things going on, deaths, um, whatever, yeah. deaths, yeah, 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 yeah. deaths, so, arrests, all that, cetera, the whole jail time, whatever it takes, right? <laughs> so, how um, obviously, probably when you started doing the interviews, probably your connections all these years. Doing photography probably they came in off. handy for that, oh, huh? They paid off tremendously, Mike, because I used to pose these guys for the magazine, you know, for cover shots, yeah, you know, uh, centerfolds, stories inside. So, and um, these guys at that time, they appreciated that to the 10th power because that was the only way they got recognition. Mm-hmm. So they knew that if I was shooting for the magazine, they were going to end up in the magazine. And therefore, they remembered this through the years. I mean, I still have friendships today because of that. And then they would come sit in our hot, we call it the hot seat, in the interview chair. <laughs> it's kind of like a, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, you know. And uh, all those guys come on the show all those years and never got paid a dime, you know. All the big names we've had on. And it, it all leads back to basically me shooting for the magazines because they all remembered me getting them into magazines. And, and I think early it. on, they didn't stay in character. We let them let them go however you know that's oh, true yeah. semi like a shoot interview for yeah. the most mm-hmm. part you know right. they could be themselves and right. go whatever direction they wanted to go yeah and we have this board that sits on our set that we've had most of them autograph it that we've had on the show and i was looking at that when we shot recently yeah and boy a lot of those guys have passed on it's scary oh my time goodness. really flies yeah. it's just amazing to me yeah it's like like candido and uh albano and um Gosh, just go on and on. It, mm-hmm. it, uh, Piper, yeah. you know, it, it's just uh, and now Bruno. Yeah, Bruno. Yeah. yeah, it's just how many have passed. It's it's sad. Shane or not Shane Douglas. Um, Bam 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 right. Bigelow is right. like a lot of these guys have, are no longer with us, and it's like my goodness, wow, uh, it's making me feel old. <laughs> real quick, John. Real quick. Yeah, it, it's it's surprising to me how many people we've had and the different kinds of people and, and the various attitudes of some of the wrestlers. 
some super, super very nice and some very, very standoffish and like, mm -hmm. get away from me kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. It, and it's, it's, it's fun and it's surprising and it's been, it's been a blast. And really some guys you would think would be a good interview ended up not being. Right. And then guys that you'd think would be a terrible interview end up being a great interview. They just you know, take kind off. Of, kind yeah. of weird. Most of the indie guys have been good interviews because oh, their yeah. stories have been more compelling. Yeah. You know, they're more forthright with what their stories, how they got yeah, to the a, point where they're at, it seems like. A little less true. hype and a little yeah. more sincerity, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of our shows that a lot of our fans talk about to this day and it was the show that we call the train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had those. Yes. Oh. And uh, oh. we'll talk about this. You were there too, weren't you, yeah. man? Yeah. But um, we were down at the, uh, at that time, it was the Monroeville Toy Show. And that's now the Comic Con, I guess. Yeah. Steel City Con, yeah. Yeah, yeah Steel yeah. City Con. And uh, we were in there and we were interviewing uh, the Iron Sheik and Lou Albano. Oh, geez. There's a recipe. <laughs> well, we didn't start out interviewing both of them, did no. we? No. It was we started out with <laughs> Albano. Yeah. yeah, but it's sort of funny. Bruno was at the same show, but he was on the opposite side of the building, away from those guys. He didn't on want purpose. To be yeah, he didn't want yeah. anywhere near them. Right? It's purpose. like when Ted DiBiase's in and Virgil's on the other side, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No contact. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think even Albano had the early onsets of Alzheimer's at this he point. He did mm -hmm. we because we had he was a having a hard time naming teams that he's yeah. had yeah. the sixteen time tag champs and he couldn't like name them all yeah sadly we 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 asked him most of the questions and kind of sideways fed him most of the answers too but yeah it was albano it was really entertaining it was just a blast to have him around you know and then um part way through the interview with albano <laughs> the sheik sheiky kept closing in and closing in and closing in like on he you. wanted on camera on yeah. you right yeah. he kept whispering to me can i come in can i come in yeah. i'm like we're doing you next you know it's like we're, we're right in the middle of this interview. John know? looks at me while we're all on, and he's just like, like, what, what do, do you I think? Do? I said, oh, bring him in. Why not? You I know? said, okay, oh. Sheiky, come on in. <clears throat> oh, boy. Oh. That was like throwing a fuel on the fire. Yeah. You know, and Sheik come in, and we started talking, and then I oh. started yeah. asking about Hogan and stuff. And oh. He was ballistic. Yeah. I think it was just before he got to his height of popularity from being on Stern show. You okay. know, when he took off being on there with Beetlejuice and that whole crew of hired Stern's flunkies, you know. He was real popular with that. We got him right before that. Right before that. And he came in, and then we started, and we knew he, you know, he goes off the rails, you know, with just his yeah. interviews. And know, a second. Cameraman's in it. And, yeah. Yeah, in a second. So then we were stoking him about Hogan and stuff, and <laughs> oh my, he went through the routine, you know, yep. wah, wah, and what, yep. you know, and he went through. Right into whole, character. Oh my gosh, yep. loud. So loud, Mike, that the whole show stopped. It, <laughs> this is the old convention center, the Monroe. Well, yeah. And, Everybody gravitated towards us. The whole show, right, which, everybody, all the customers that were in the whole place were gathered around us. You know, four or five hundred people were all around us. We're like, oh, brother, and Sheik's just mouthing off, mouthing off, and going jabroni this, jabroni that. And, and they're blocking the aisles for the rest of the people beyond us, and we're getting flack about that. You know, all those yeah. paid celebrities that are yeah. there to sign autographs, they can't get to them. So Billy D. Williams is there, and Minnie Me, and all these people were there. Ticked the off because we're right? costing them money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're costing them money because this group is just forming because the <laughs> sheep going ballistic. Oh, it's getting louder and louder. Oh, yeah. and then everybody was around us. The whole the whole place was around us, just mobbing us. I remember then, John the look on Matt's face, our camera guy Matt. He was like petrified. He didn't know what to do. Like we got to get out of it here. It was insane. Yeah. And then the celebrities were. PO'd, like I said, because yeah. they're not making their money. You know, people can't get to mm -hmm. them and it's choking the lines off. And it's just like, this is a train wreck. Just And then the promoter of the show got wind of this. Yeah. He wondered what the hell was going on. And he come <laughs> over down. and he's like, oh. Cut the show, cut the right. show. And we're like, this is a great show. We can't <laughs> right. cut the show. It's like, look at yeah. this. So so we keep going and we keep going. And finally, he almost basically told the cameraman, shut it off, yep. shut it off. Yep. You know, you're you're killing my show yeah you know so finally the show had to end and he had our cameraman shut the camera off right. and then the cops oh. come over <laughs> security yeah. Sheik, security come over Sheik was out of control at this oh, yeah. point he was throwing f-bombs yeah. around and yep. stuff and then the cops told him he said calm down we're gonna arrest you and then he threw more he got it just throw more fuel on the fire and Sheik was just insane then throwing f-bombs like crazy and they were gonna arrest him and then finally I don't know what calmed it down, but the cops finally walked. And then Sheik turns to me. He said, how'd I do? How'd yeah. I do? Yeah. And I'm like, 
<laughs> you damn near got arrested yeah. and you ruined the show. It's like, <laughs> and, what do you mean? How'd you do? But he's in character. He was. And you the know, funniest yeah. part was as he's getting louder, we're packing our gear as quick as we can to get out. Cause we're, we're going to, we're going to get tied into this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were wanting to get out of there yeah, at this yeah. point while the cops are ready to arrest him. And it's like, this is crazy. Yeah. But to this day, <clears throat> the Bruno show, uh, you know, our two hour interview with Bruno and that show, yeah. people were like neck and neck on That's which one they one talk they about, talk about yeah. first. So you know, <laughs> how much of that could you use? Was it just like a heavily edited <laughs> sheet rant well, to get on television? It, the sheet came in towards the end of the show. So we yeah. were able by, by, some creative editing and, and making a front and a back. We you were had able enough. to go ahead and make yeah. a show out of it. But yeah. Yeah. As far as audio wise, there was some editing involved. <laughs> yeah. yeah sure his, was. his super craziness, it ended up after the camera, you know, the promoter shut the camera. Yeah, we down. weren't so rolling. When he really yeah. got stoked, when he found out the camera was off, you know, camera yeah. zooming, yeah. he freaking flipped oh. out. You know, he just went crazy. And he had chic. no, yeah, typical <laughs> sheep. <laughs> typical yeah, sheep. And then after it was done, How'd I do? How'd I do? That and part like, stunned me. I couldn't oh believe it. Gosh. It's all a game to him. Yeah. You know? It was just we he, just wanted out at that point, Mike. We had to get out of there. Yeah, because we knew we, it wasn't a good situation. Well, as I recall, we didn't really even have permission to go in there. No. We not, just kind of I John, the, the schmoozer, he got us he got us in. Yeah, somehow. yeah. I know. They're they're tough to yeah, get their game media yeah. in there. So. And I asked Sheik the day before and I asked Albano the day before, and they both said yes. So whenever we got in, I'm like, they know we're coming to interview yeah. them. You Somehow know. we got we got in and talked our way through and just started setting stuff up, figuring, well, see how far we get. Mm-hmm. You know, we got yeah. pretty far. Got pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> but what a train wreck! Oh, and we wonder God. why they don't let media in there. Yeah, days. exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, some of these old actors and stuff. You never know. That's true. <laughs> so. And like Bruno, n- then we realized why he was on the other end, <laughs> no you know, yet. of the floor. You know, <laughs> uh, far away from these two guys because he. He had been with them, yeah. you know, through the years. He, he knows what yeah. they're like. Yeah. 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 And that's why he was on the opposite caddy corner, you know, way, way, way far yeah. away. It, it, it did feel like between that and, and you know, the goings on, like the news over the years with WWE and everything and them coming back, like he knew the score and he knew what he wanted to stay away from. Exactly. Right? Sure. Yep. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's so true. So true. Maybe he was very smart in that respect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yep. He, he had a good story. It was a long story, but it was... But his story was compelling. I could listen to it often and mm-hmm. not be bored with it, you know? Right. It's quite a story. Quite and a we life. know when we had him in the hot seat that there were certain areas we couldn't, you know, go to. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's just off limits, you know, like he and his son, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Now, when we had David on our show, we went there with that. You yeah. Know, yeah. He was Bruno, okay. Yeah, yeah. He was okay with that. And, uh, but Bruno, we knew not to do that. And he's still pretty much kayfabe at that point, you know, and mm-hmm. so you, you certain things slipped though. Yeah. Certain, things, things, certain slipped. things slipped. Yeah. Yeah. But, and he also told us that up to that point, that was the longest interview he'd ever given anybody in his life. Yeah. He reminded yeah. me of that every time I yeah. saw him. He looked at that. his watch a couple of times. Yeah. He but kept yeah, saying, John, I gave you the longest interview of my career. <laughs> you can tell, you can tell he's from before the era of podcasts. Exactly. <laughs> for sure. Yep. For sure. But you yeah. can also tell his story was well rehearsed and it didn't take a lot of prodding to get him to talk. No, we didn't have to ask multiple questions. He could just go. And that's right. kind of what we wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it was mm-hmm. one question. He was good for eight, 10 minutes. We mm-hmm. sat for you over know. an hour, right, John? Yeah, it was yeah, a close well, to two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was close something. to two hours. And then we all went out to dinner, which was even better. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Any other yeah. great moments from the show in these this 18-year history? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, I guess they, they, that looks like the, the spectrum of the best and the well, almost worst, right? Yeah. <laughs> we had a good, uh, You, I would vaguely remember, Candido. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Chris yeah. Candido, when he yeah. was still alive. He was he with cut a promo was that print. offshoot. He was with that XPW, I think it was, Rob Black. Yeah. The one that was with the porn industry guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lizzie Borden is who he was married to. She did a, she was a good interview. We couldn't air any of that, I don't think. But uh, (laughs) Candido Candido did an interview there. Yeah, I don't know who he was working that night, but we'd do, there were times where we would shoot interviews prior to the match, then we'd shoot the match and then come back and repackage it, you know. Mm -hmm. While Candido did this interview prior to going to the ring, and it was you remember the old Terry Funk interview where he took the garbage can and dumped the garbage all over himself? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what Candido did. And we, we had no idea. It was I was interviewing him, and then he was going ballistic. He was getting into the funk mode, and then he grabbed it, <laughs> went off camera, grabbed a trash can, brought it in, and it, he didn't even know what was in it. 
dump this trash just all over himself. <laughs> just turned the garbage can upside down and just littered himself with trash. And then he kept going, kept yeah. going, you know, Jeez. just a pro. And it was just like something Terry Funk would do. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty unique. <laughs> but a couple of the other guys, uh, the old Randy, he was the big guy. You know, he always sat in the center of our table like <laughs> Randy Bodell does. And um, a couple of the guys got off on picking on the biggest guy on our panel, uh, Matt Bourne. We had him on the show. And that's and uh, that's the original Doink. Original yeah. Doink. Yeah, original Doink. He was on the show, and he wanted to put the sugar yeah. on Big Randy, which <laughs> I didn't even know what the sugar was being around wrestling my whole life. But I guess uh, you have the, your opponent on the ground, and you're basically straddling his head from the back, and then you're pulling his leg up and just – crunching them you know and big randy uh born did that right in the middle of our set yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just brutalized them and then uh baron Sakluna, we right. had him on and he that was picked very on, early very early yeah and uh we had him on and he picked on big randy too he got him in a headlock Put him in a headlock again on the show Stood yeah on up, the show got him in the headlock yeah yep it was uh <clears throat> pretty unique um funny and, I, yeah. I, I, I laughed. Very it's funny. So and then funny. we had uh, one of the other doinks on our show through the years, and uh, he come on and he was spraying silly string all over <laughs> us and stuff like that, you know, and yeah. just kind of unique. We shot that in memories. front of a live audience down in Connellsville. Yeah, yeah. that was mm-hmm. down at uh, uh, Glass something? Glass Porch yeah. or Glass Fest? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Mount Pleasant Glass Mount Pleasant. and Ethnic Festival. Yeah, we shot a live show under their gazebo there and had doink on. Yeah. He was all painted up and yeah. And we've had him on a number of times. He's a local guy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Always entertaining. Tom is always entertaining. Oh, Lots very. of stories and make you laugh, you know. Yep. But, uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's been on what, maybe three, four times, John? Something like at that. At least. Yeah. Yeah, at least. Yeah. You know, some of the other guys I really appreciated was guys. We had Ricky Steamboat on a couple of years oh, ago. Yes. Well, what a nice, nice guy he was. He he was in no hurry and he, he just sat there and it seemed like he enjoyed it as much as we did. Mm-hmm. You know. Some of the other guys, very standoffish. Um, Vader really wasn't too enjoyable. You yeah. Know? He yeah. did it grudgingly, and he was a little little standoffish, you know. But mm-hmm. most of the guys were, were, were really good, and I, I really enjoyed some of them a lot. Really and uh, Al Snow. Al Snow was great. A yeah. couple shows with Al. Three. Three-part yeah, three show shows. with Al. We had, we had to almost, like, get him to stop talking. That's yeah. how good he was. You know? <laughs> yeah. Midnight Express, I think we had them on for four or five shows. Yeah. You know, yeah. they just would talk forever. Yeah. Great guys. DiBiase, uh, super mm-hmm. gentleman, yeah. super good guy. Bob Bob Orton. Yep. Slaughter, great. Yeah. Snooka. Had Snooka, Snooka on one time. Yep, had Snooka yeah. on. And that was weird because usually Snooka's not allowed to do anything uh, because his wife's there or his manager's there or whatever. Mm-hmm. Neither one was around this night. We got him in the hot seat. Yeah. And <laughs> we we were very fortunate. We heard night. brother 50 times, Love I think, yeah. in the course Love of 20 brother. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, that's true. But nonetheless, it was a good interview, and people, everyone knows Jimmy Snuka, so we thought well, he, he's a guy we got to get. Yeah, yeah. I, was sure. like, we're, I think we were talking about this before the show. Like, uh, you know, we, we talk about the reach of this because I, I think I, I think it gets dismissed a lot because, like, oh, it's Armstrong Cable. Like, people right. in Butler see it or something, yeah. right? Um, and you talked about it being kind of crossover, but you said you've had a lot of experiences. You were telling me before the show of being like people recognizing you like other places. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, like the Super Bowl, for it's instance. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Super Bowl. <laughs> we might as well start with that one. Yeah, right, Mike? Um, it was a dream of mine to get my dad to a Super Bowl, and finally the Steelers got back to one in Super Bowl Forty. Waited twenty six years or whatever it was uh, to get back there, and thank God I got to get my dad to that one and Forty Three. But uh, we're in Detroit, Michigan, at the Super Bowl, and I'm looking for celebrities. You know, I'm a I'm an autograph hound. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a collector. I love getting photos with celebrities. Always have. And uh, I'm at the Super Bowl with my dad, looking for celebrities, getting pictures with them. And I got quite a few. And here, people are coming up to me about our show. And like, great show, wrestling, great wrestling. Are you the wrestling guy? Yeah, dude. I'm, you know, and they want pictures with me. They want autographs of me. And my dad's just standing there. He's just bewildered. You know, he's like, this is unbelievable. That's why you're here. But they're coming up to you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it, it, it it's pretty cool and then we we would travel uh to different sports shows because we were both collectors and uh we'd be at the sports show and people would be coming up in ohio and kentucky and you know west virginia and stuff like that one time i was in an airplane and i had the end seat and uh the flight attendant come come to me and he bent down and he whispers in my ear 
are you the wrestling guy? And I looked up and I said, yeah. So here we are, you know, 30,000 feet in the air. And this guy's asking me if I'm the wrestling guy. So it's, it's kind of cool. You get recognized everywhere we go, even out of state, you know, Mm -hmm. where I, I don't think of us being out of state, but we are in many States and, um, that Armstrong serves. And, uh, one other story I like to, um, go back to is we were in a shopping mall locally here in Pittsburgh, Ross Park Mall. My wife and I were shopping and uh, years ago, and there's this guy that's running down the up escalator. The escalator's going up, but he's running down it. So I'm <laughs> like to my wife, I'm like, that guy just either stole something and he's trying to get away or he's coming <laughs> for me. And here he was coming for me. He saw me from the uh, uh, second floor and he come down to me to get a picture with me and stuff. So it's kind of cool. And then whenever you're out eating, the guys will attest to this. You're out eating or walking and people are whispering. They're like, I don't know if that's him. I don't know. Yeah. Go go ask. Looking him. at you yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Randy gets them coming into his work a lot. Yeah. yeah you just had one recently, right, Randy? Occasionally it'll come in. Just yeah. Ask him, Dan. Ask him. Go ahead. Are you on that show? Does that wrestling stuff? Yeah. <laughs> And Pat, you get it all the time, I know, because we talk about it. Yeah, more more locally. I'm I'm not really an autographed hound or things like that, and I'm, I don't I haven't traveled as much as you have, John. But yeah, locally, um, usually in the mornings I'll stop in for a cup of coffee at the local coffee shop, and you're sitting there talking to your friends, and you see somebody at the counter looking at you, and he keeps looking, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he must have probably saw the wrestling show. And sometimes they come over, and um, it's it's it, it's it's just been so funny the people where where they see you and how they come about you and mm-hmm. some people leave you alone some people send their kids up you know things like that yeah <laughs> right let them do the dirty work right <laughs> yeah and, and some people want an autograph I'm just like all right whatever you know yeah, yeah you know <laughs> it's kind of unique because we expect it around town yeah but whenever we get out and you expect it at the wrestling shows of sure. course because the, mm-hmm. the fans are into this sort of thing but whenever you're out and about and you you know, someone comes up and says, Hey, nice show, you know, just out mm-hmm. of the blue. It's kind of, kind of unique. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a couple of people I remember over the years, they were visiting somebody somewhere else and saw the show and said, Hey, I know that guy. That's that guy from Butler, that kind of thing. You know, <laughs> about that. you hear about it secondhand, of course, but yeah. Yeah. It's been interesting. When I posted that we were doing this interview, um, there was, uh, at the Marcus Mann who, 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 uh, books down in, um, uh, uh rise down in uh, Tunnelsville area. Like, like talked about, like, I think he's the one that was saying that, like, you know, hey, I watch these guys, you know, the, uh, every yeah. month and everything. And now, he, you know, these guys are in wrestling. So it's kind of cool to see that connection happening Pretty um, neat. when we got to bring you guys on here today. Another one ran, uh, we just had him on the show, the wrestler. He used to watch us in college. That Daniel Hooven. Uh, Daniel Hooven. Yeah. Yeah. Slippery Rock. Right? Slippery Rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He used to watch us in college. And then now he's wrestling. He's working. And we had him on it. So he came full full circle. Yeah, he, th- he thought that was a how. Being being on the show, he used to watch when he was growing up. You know? <laughs> yeah. He yeah. couldn't and, wait to show it to his buddies. And this is a guy that's been on like the Sci-Fi Channel on ghost shows and stuff. You yeah. Know? Right. <laughs> and, and he's excited to be on, on this. It's great. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of unique. So awesome. So, uh, I mean, you guys are still going strong here. You guys still doing the show, still going strong. Every time the calendar year comes up, we're like, well, are we going to be on the schedule for next year? Right. right. It keeps, (laughs) keeps happening. So, uh, uh, they they still like it. They do. We enjoy doing it. Well, it's even yeah. cool. Even if we don't get the national guys, there's enough local guys, a lot, a lot of independent mm-hmm. talent, mm-hmm. and true. guys with history. Like we'll have Tarantula is a good oh, interview yes. that could talk forever. Ken Jugan, who Ken just Jugan. beating uh, the cancer he had. I mean, he can go wow. on forever. Right. Yep. We have we're friends with uh, from Wildcat Belts, who makes the belts now mm-hmm. for WWE. Mm-hmm. Drew Lazar. Drew Lazar. Yeah. So we I went mean, to his house actually and did a two part show of how he makes the belts. That's awesome. That was a great show. I really, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. The yeah. fans really loved that too because they didn't realize that the WWE belts are coming right. out of this guy's house. Here's the guy. Strobe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's the guy that makes them. There he is right there on your yeah. TV set. And Pretty we cool. had some of them in our hands before they had them up there, you know. It's kind and of he sent us a Christmas present a couple years ago. Yes, he did. Mm. Christmas Eve, a box came and he sent us a belt and it sits right in front of the three spot where yeah. on our show it's the middle and belt. it has the middle belt it has our logo on it this logo here pro wrestling news and views yeah. it's on the belt and uh, that was our christmas gift from drew lazario from wildcat championship wrestling belts but uh, he does belts for not only wrestling federations but golf tournaments weddings you know you name uh, it hot dog parties. competitions are yeah. Oh, yeah exactly uh, yeah <laughs> right pretty Nathan's. much, pretty much yeah. anything now anybody yeah. wants yeah. a belt uh, there was just last weekend there was uh, somebody got married and had one of his yeah. belts and they wore the robes as they come down the steps yeah. and everything who was that Randy? Forget. i forget if that was a sports, football player sports or something. Figure? yeah some yeah. athlete yeah. i can't recall 
Yeah. They I'll tell you what, my, though. What, they stole my gimmick, Peach. They did. I yeah. know. Yeah. Jeez. Our, our, my wedding was all centered around wrestling. <laughs> that was one of my steps of getting me to the altar. His was, reception had an actual wrestling ring in the middle for of the, the dance floor. floor. For the yeah. dance floor. Yes. Yeah, for the dance yes. floor. It was brought in from uh, a guy's name was Joe. I can't remember his last name, but he was uh, from uh, Columbus area. And he brought it in and set it up. And we didn't put the ropes on because the decorator already had our wedding colors, which were purple and gold, as the wrestling ropes. So it was around three sides. Yep. Yeah. And then the one side was left down. And then there was set in, uh, steps built, especially f- to get up into the ring. So that was the actual dance floor. That's yeah. amazing. Hey, and you don't want people drinking at a wedding and getting trying to get through the ropes. That's right, a right. disaster. This is, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. My that wife was... and I come back in with the belts, you know, and Flair's music played and it was it was <laughs> pretty even cool. the wedding cake had the Hasbro wrestlers all over it up and nice. down. Nice. Yeah. Place. We had one of those cakes where you didn't cut the actual wedding cake, you know, there was only one piece that we fed each other and the cake stood all night. Yeah. So all the Hasbro, you know, they used to have bridesmaids and groomsmen going up the stairs while ours had wrestling figures all over the table and up the stairs yep. and stuff like that. And and then um, when you entered the room, there was a big sign that said, Welcome to the World Wrestling Reception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Drew Lazario made that, too. Drew made that. that. Yeah, he <laughs> made that banner. Yeah. 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 But uh, it was and, all all around wrestling. Yeah, it was all. And then we even worked an angle yeah, in the ring. Yeah, we did a skit. Yep. Yeah, uh, Bill Apter, uh, it was kind of like his idea. And he brought a gimmick camera. You know, the old big VHS cameras that were huge. Uh, that's what we both shoot with, with at the time. And, uh, he brought one of those that was dead and he said, he worked up the angle, of course. And he said, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to shoot footage of me bothering you all day. And, uh, and then I'm going to shoot your bridesmaids and groomsmen saying, who is this guy? Where'd he come from? You know, cause they don't know Bill after, you know? Yeah. So, uh, he, he shot footage. He had people, he had others shooting footage of him, like, asking Pat stuff and asking everybody else stuff in the wedding party and just being an annoyance. What well, just boiled up to this angle that we shot up in the inside ring inside the ring. Yep. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> so it, I think it started out with me with the mic thanking him. You know, he was always my idol, got me into pro wrestling, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And you were always my idol and stuff. I said, but today, my wedding day, you ruined my wedding day. <laughs> And the whole crowd went, no one knew this was going down. Right, except right. The guys are into wrestling. The whole crowd went, oh. And I said, you ruined my wedding day. You're bothering all my people, you know, friends, family, uh, the attendants for our wedding. I said, you just ruined it. And he, he went back and forth with me, back and forth. And then uh, I said, it's just terrible. So I, he had the gimmick camera on his shoulder. And I opened up the camera, took the tape out, the videotape out, and and I just pulled it all apart. So everybody thought this was our wedding video that I was destroying and threw it on the ground, trampled it. And then he's just like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Johnny? And then I took the camera that he had and I grabbed it and I waylaid Bill over the head with this <laughs> camera, those big bulky cameras. That's a big deal, those cameras. Yeah. And I, you know how you're supposed to protect your opponent by putting your hand here and then hitting them, yeah. you know? Well, I kind of forgot that because usually I'm behind the camera <laughs> and I didn't remember all that. And I got two up into this angle. But I just took the camera and I waylaid him and he <laughs> went down like a ton of bricks. Yep. And then that just another guy had shot for him started pounding on me. And then all my buddies come in and then people that didn't even know this was an angle <laughs> in the crowd. They're all rushing the ring. Yeah. They're kicking the shit out of after. Yeah, we're, we're they're just laying after, the boots yeah. to him, just <clears throat> pounding it. He's got this big goose egg on his head because I went crazy and didn't protect him yep. and waylaid him. And then I'm getting beat up. And then and my wife have, comes in the ring. Right. And didn't, didn't we have Norm like trying to, trying to defend him and kind yeah. of throwing something? Oh, yeah. Norm I told Norm to, to get, clock me and I'll roll out of the ring and hit the floor. You know, that Norm, was all part of it. Norm, yeah. Norm Connors. 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 Norm From Connors, I, yeah. IWC. So, yeah, Norm was in on the angle, too. Okay. You know, it was yeah. hilarious. So, and then it, the thing, it went out of control, though. It was yeah. kind of like uh, the show earlier with the Sheik. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There were friends of ours that had no idea, but they thought we were getting pounded on. Yeah. So they come in, they were throwing haymakers yeah. and putting the boots to like after and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, this guy's my boss. Yeah. You know? It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? So it was it was hilarious. And the, the real camera caught all of this. Yeah. So we have all the footage of all this going down. And my wife came in the ring and she threw some blood. Yeah, she was stuff. stomping, right? Yeah. So it was uh, a funny evening. It was it was funny. Yeah. It was it was great. But 
everyone and then everyone was coming up like did you ruin your wedding video and i'm like no that was a gimmick tape you know and a gimmick camera <laughs> yeah. and yeah so it was it was quite fun though but very different people were like used to the normal you know yeah. wedding receptions yeah. where nothing like this would yeah, occur just get up and dance right i think that's what every wrestling fan wants was their wedding that. yeah Definitely. that's true you had the dream come true with that. yeah i told d whenever she wanted to get married i said well i'll agree to it but it has to be a wrestling theme. I'll agree to it. Yeah. <laughs> and even up on the altar, whenever the pastor was giving us, you know, our do's and don'ts and stuff like that, I turned to the camera and we both did the four life thing. The NWO was big at that time. <laughs> we all did the four life thing. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh, and then we left the altar to Pomp and Circumstance, Savage's song, right, you know. Right. Yeah, we, we left it out. But everybody oh. just was left with, their head shaking you know the best, and, thing, the best thing is like a wrestling fan or a wrestler's wedding right because yeah. it, you're not getting away without something interesting exactly not just, if it, not even just the interesting cast of characters that's in the in the in, in the audience uh, right. Right, right at that point I, I've, right. I've got to film or attend uh four now oh, wow <laughs> over the last uh, wow. uh 10 years mm. and it's always an interesting when you like when you look at the like like the, the, gr the groom's party and realize like that's his faction from from iwc uh, <laughs> right <laughs> right exactly it's always always a fun kind of thing just yeah like, mm. well, and, i remember our reception what you just said to echo that mike when tarantula and his wife <laughs> it was living at the time black widow they were in their gimmick because they had to go to a match that night. So they walked in the <laughs> no, no, wedding wait, So reception. I know Tarantula now. I, I didn't get to see him like more than a few years ago. Okay. Um, like he's kind of just a, a biker kind of thing right now. Does he always done that kind always. of thing? So That's he, his So life. he showed up in like biker fatigues. But and his before was with the black though, with the uh, cape and all. The cape. With the cape. <laughs> That's what it was. So, and he yeah. had the long hair then. You so know, now so he's, he's there with a cape. Yeah, and walking in biker uh, uh, look Chow. at your wedding all that because he just he rode the bike to the reception. <laughs> yeah, and his wife it. was dressed as the Black Widow. That was her gimmick, and she had spider webs all over her face and black <laughs> lipstick, and kind of like the goth look before it go. was even popular. You I know? love that. And uh, they walked in, and everybody just like stopped. They were putting the fork to the mouth and were like. <laughs> What uh -oh. is that? You know, but it stopped time. It was, it was See, crazy. Now my touch with wrestling with my wedding, I recently got remarried. Two tell years, them your story. Two man. years this is ago. Great. And like we've said, I've been friends with Bruno over the years from getting him to be on the show. I, I met his wife years earlier when I was in retail management and I met, met his wife at a shoe store. I was a retail manager there. She would come in and shop at a North Hills and I recognized her just over the years. Just, I just knew who she was. So we became friends and obviously I was trying to somehow reach Bruno and eventually between John and the show and taking, you know, he, he needed rides to different events and somehow we just ended up hooking up. So eventually I became his man for that, for going to autograph signings for the Steel City Con. I took him, sat with him for those things and we just befriended each other over the years. Well, lo and behold, I was getting married. My dad had passed away a few years prior and I thought, you know, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask Bruno to be my best man. So I called him on the Why phone not? one night, had the conversation. He said, yes. And I said, I said, you know what I'm asking you? He said, yeah. I said, I'm asking you to stand for me to be my, I understand Randy. <laughs> I'll be and I said, I'll be there. I said, okay. So sure enough, you know, I got off the phone. I like had to check my pulse and he's coming. So he was my best man, my wedding two years ago, and, you know, and he pictures, even, video. I'm happy to have it. And it's a great memory. He even had a, his own tux, right? Had his own tux. Yeah. We had a wedding party and my wife said, make sure we, you know, wedding, you know, it was a small wedding party and, uh, is he going to have a matching tux with everybody? And I said, well, I'll call him and I'll see. And I called him and, and he said, uh, he said, no, Randy, I have one. And I said, well, my wife sort of wants everybody to match. He said, no, this doesn't go out of style. Well, am I going to argue with Bruno about getting a tux? You know, the one I want to wear, the one he has. So I said, okay, that's fine. And he was fine. Then he did the toast too, right? He right? did the toast. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Good yeah. memory. Good memories. That's For awesome. Sure. So where can people find you? Of course, uh, if you guys are in the Armstrong Cable Network, you guys are definitely there. Definitely there. Where else, Peach? Uh, Facebook. You can find. You can. We don't. We don't really post much on Facebook once in a while. Pro Wrestling News and Views, mm -hmm. and that's that's really that's about it. Yeah, it's it, it, Arm, Armstrong Cable Systems only. So you know. yeah, Armstrong owns our show, so we can't put it out everywhere. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we don't. Yeah, we have, have talked about possibly putting some of the shows on. Mm. Um, 
we need to explore that a little more. Mm-hmm. See if we can possibly do that. You know, Absolutely. some of the older ones that you know, they, I think they'd probably run their useful, yeah, you know, course. So that'd be nice. There's to have a, I mean, it's a, it's 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 a, it's amazing because there's 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 just this treasure trove there that. Yeah, yeah. So the, eighteen years. If you're in a region, you've been fortunate enough to be able to experience what you guys have put out there. Yeah, that's really cool. And again, we did put um, the Bruno interview and the Dan Hooven uh, interview in the in the in the uh, event for this. Uh, oh, good as well. Oh, and nice. uh, well, I'll try to make a point to repost those as well. But you can find those. Just go look up Pro Wrestling News and Views on YouTube, and you'll find yeah. those two videos. Very, I think very Armstrong awesome. has their own channel, maybe. Yeah, they they have their own they have their own YouTube channel. I know yeah. they've been putting a lot of stuff from there. Yeah. Um, and I, I've seen stuff they've been doing with like other wrestling promotions too. So yes, a yes. little bit here and there. So it's kind of cool to, you know, that's, that's able to expand out a little bit. Awesome. So awesome. Very good. So thank you so much guys. Um, anywhere else people can find you online or you guys personally or anything you guys want to plug this coming up. Me and Pat are online, Facebook. John's yeah, Facebook Matt, and all that. Just under my name, Pat Gallagher. Yeah, yeah. there you go. It'll, the picture will probably be something pinball related if you're looking for. There's more oh, we can get Pat into Gallagher that. Right yeah, you better get into that. That's, uh, that's on, a big part on. of his life. All right, so <laughs> I got to go to I got to go to pro, the Pro Wrestling News and Views headquarters a few years ago, <laughs> and I didn't know. Like you get to see if you watch the videos, you see the the magazines are behind yeah. it, right? Yeah. A, it's just an amazing rack of, of just, uh, you know, awesome history of magazines there. Um, and, and but the other side, <laughs> there is like <laughs> where there was a there was a macho man, Randy Savage jacket. Like there was there's a there's there's Royal Rumble pinball. Like there's all kinds of superstar stuff Graham's Hunt boots. House, yeah. yeah superstar Graham's boots and glasses and Owen Hart stuff. Owen Hart you stuff. Macho run- man. More you, stuff from the you guys ring. need to open this up as a pro wrestling museum up there. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we should. We probably could. Yeah, yeah. we should. Yeah, Work it, on that, John. But Pat's the pinball guy. He's been into pinball since he was a kid working yeah, for his that's, that's been pretty much my life, uh, playing pinball, enjoying it, uh, mm-hmm. repairing games, and mm-hmm. collecting and all that sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much all my life. But, have, I, uh, have I not run into you at Replay FX? What's that? <laughs> have I not run into you at Pinburg? I've never gone to Replay FX. I'll tell you, Mike, I'm oh, old man. school. I like the older games. Yeah. So there's not much for me there. Now, my daughter goes. She loves it. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. And I've been out to the, you know, obviously Papa headquarters a couple yeah, of times, but yeah. they're closing that up now. So uh, not going to be oh, there anymore. I didn't, oh, I yeah. they're, they're looking for a new location. They right? have a place in Bellevue right now. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Smaller. This is uh, the local guys are a, a nonprofit. They they're kind of have a, a you know, between pinball and, and arcade, just yeah. a bunch of old machines but they they were in a warehouse in carnegie right so they couldn't really open it up to the public and uh, they bring all the games and they, i think they source some other games and and they just take over the convention center and they turn it into a giant arcade for like four days, four days wow yeah. it's like amazing one price come in play everything they have console games yeah. like half of it is the pinball right because they do their competitions and then then they open it up for everybody wow yeah, and, so. and if you like if you like the newer games i mean mm-hmm. you can't it's the best value in town. That a, that and the arcade out in Aliquippa oh, are just phenomenal. Uh, you know? The uh, Coin Up Hall of Fame, I think it's called. Yeah, right? I know pinball, the, the, pinball PA, pinball PA dot yeah. com. We, we've interviewed them over on our. Oh, have you? Uh, yeah, when they were just opening up, we talked with them on the awesome chat on awesomecast dot com. Yeah, and even uh, out there, there's uh, on a daily basis 440 games, pinballs and videos to play for one money. Yeah, pay your money, go in and play. It's it's great. Yep. But yeah, it's that's that's been a big part of my life. Always has been. Yeah, yeah. you started. He started out so young with that. His grandfather was a distributor. He was an operator. Yeah. Operator. Mm-hmm. He's a guy who put the machines into bars and the restaurants and all that. Okay, that would go service those. You know, yeah. that's how it kind of learned that way. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and he's still working on them to this day. Oh, yeah. You know, buying yeah. machines and refurbing them. And it's fun. I got a house full. Yeah. <laughs> and the, my my one friend called it a tinkerer's house. Yep. Which is. Pretty apropos. That's yeah. pretty much nails if you look at if you look at my place. You know. it seems right. That and seems he services right. the old electro electro mechanical. Yeah, pre digital. I, I don't yeah. really mess with digital games. I do yeah. the pre digital stuff. So it's what I know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what I enjoy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. And we've taken a couple trips to York and Chicago for mm-hmm. the big pinball yeah. conventions and Drove stuff like to, that. Yeah. yeah. I go to, I usually go to two or three shows a year on the East Coast just for the weekend, have fun, you know. Hang out with your buddies. You only see them a couple times a year that way, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I had a lot of fun doing that. I love it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love it. It was great great to experience and check out the place and see every, everything you got down there. So go check them out. Uh, again, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, uh, Pro Wrestling News and Views. 
and uh, and check out everything going on again. Uh, other interviews that we've done over the years as well on uh, Indie Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com and Indie Wrestling dot us. And uh, until next time, support Indie Wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.